my viewers. So, Silver writes, Fencing, right honourable, in this newfangled age, is like our fashions. Every day a change resembling the chameleon who altereth himself into all colours save white. So fencing changeth into all wards save the right. And silver, of course, is dead right. There's all sorts of fashions going on and it continues to this day. And I want to talk about something that was once a thing, but seems to have fallen out of fashion. Um, and I'm going to make the case that it should be brought back into fashion. So, not everybody can afford a steel broadsword, and when people, of course, are beginners, we all would like to equip them with a useful substitute weapon before letting them loose with steel. Now, traditionally, the art of broadsword was practiced with the single stick, which was quite literally a wooden stick with a leather or wicker basket around it. Now, even in period, it was recognised that these were not particularly good sword substitutes. Uh, for a start, they tend to be very light, um, but they're also, because they're sticks, they're inflexible, so they're actually not particularly safe. Um, particularly when thrusting, they're dangerous, but even when striking, uh, it's exactly like being clubbed with a stick. So these, even, even quite a light stick like this, which weighs much less than a real sword, um, that really isn't a very, very good sword substitute and it can be quite dangerous. If we follow the advice of people like Matthewson and get ourselves a wooden sword made to the same shape and weight and length as the real thing, so as to overcome some of the uh, deficiencies of a traditional single stick, you get something that is really quite a lethal weapon. Okay, so this weighs slightly over a kilo. Um, it has an edge and a flat, and you could kill people with this. This is a, a really, really significant weapon in and of itself, and you'd have to gear up to the same amount that you would do about with steel to uh, free play with one of these. Now, some modern people do use rattan instead of wood for their single six, um, on the basis that it's light and slightly flexible, but you really run into the same problems that you do with a, with a traditional single stick in that it's too light to really substitute well for a sword. And of course, rattan is not a traditional material, so why bother? Most recently, of course, uh, we now have these uh, plastic broadswords which are available, which, um, uh, you know, in some ways have been a good thing. They're relatively cheap, they're widely available, um, and that, you know, is all to all good and well for s equipping classes with, with good British weapons. Um, so to that I all approve. However, plastic swords in general do tend to give a sense of safety that they do not necessarily deserve. So these things, the, the weight and heft and all that is, is all about right. Um, and they flex quite nicely if you're thrusting, um, but they do not flex at all in the plane in which you strike people. And so, swinging this around in a cutty style um, really is not a particularly safe thing to do. These things can hit really, really quite hard. Um, and again, you really need to gear up to the same extent you do to that with steel if you're going to use these with vigor. Um, the gaps in the basket are just wide enough for the blade of a sword to go through and we have had uh, a number of injuries caused by people using plastic swords as if they were safe bouting weapons and not something that is essentially a substitute for, for steel. Um, so they're okay but honestly I don't particularly like them. Um, I also don't find that they are very sword-like um, in the way that they hit each other. So way back in the day, uh, when people were using Shinai as longsword substitutes, we came up with the idea of using uh, Shinai as single stick substitutes, um, and using an idea that Tony Wolf introduced us to, uh, we started using flotation boys to uh, put on the end of Shinai and shorten the handle and come up with the Shinai single stick. Um, and after giving the plastics a go for a year or so, um, that we gave them all up and went back to the Shinai single sticks and have been using them, you know, continuously for a couple of decades now. Um, and I think these are a much, much better idea. 
Um, because they collapse in all planes, you really can whack away at each other um, and the weapon itself absorbs a lot of the force. And so it's something that you really can doubt with just a mask and gloves and t-shirts and uh, not do too much damage. Obviously you do have to be a little careful when you're thrusting because they don't really flex much in the thrust. They do bow out a little bit, but you really need a high speed camera to see that. Um, but for a, a very cutty based uh, system like silver or broadsword, these are actually really good substitutes. They're obviously heavier than a single stick. They've got quite a good sword like heft um, to them, even if they weigh a little less. Um, and I think they're a really, really good idea. Now, as far as the hilts go, you can use all sorts of different things. So flotation boys um, uh, are what we started using. These are apparently very difficult to get in a lot of parts of the world. I'm continually getting emails from people saying, where do you buy these things? We just buy them at the local boat shop. But uh, apparently that is not the same the world over. So of course there are other things you can use. So this is a plastic hilt made for SCA rattan combat. And this is a steel hilt made for SCA rattan combat. Um, and these are the great advantage of being uh, widely available and not too expensive. Um, and they will last forever. If they can stand up to SCA rattan bashing, they can certainly stand up to an awful lot of uh, Shinai combat. Um, and they're fairly easy to put on. Um, so that's what our default is these days, is I buy lots of these plastic hilts made for SCA compact. But in a pinch, you could of course make yourself a leather single stick hilt, or in this case, a pot, okay? Um, this is not a flower pot, I will say. Flower pots tend to disintegrate under shin eye blows. This is a pot that was used by road a road crew I met to mix um, uh, bitumen in, and they gave me a whole pile of these things. Um, and these have been quite tough. But you can use a whole bunch of things. You can make yourself leather or plastic loops and stirrup hilts and all sorts of things um, in order to give yourself a little bit of hand protection there. Now, in terms of putting them together, it's really easy. This is how I do it. to put together a batch of about a dozen of these, um, which is what I've been doing this afternoon. Um, honestly, the longest part of the process is the sewing up of the ends, that's sort of the time consuming bit, but even then it really doesn't take very long to put them together. Um, Shin of course do come in different sizes. A size 39, uh, which is a standard adult size, is what I use for nearly everybody, um, but uh, you can get smaller ones, 36s, for kids or particularly small females who need something a little bit lighter, um, you can use a, a smaller shin eye for that. Um, so, uh, relatively easy, relatively quick, and putting together a dozen of these at a time, so I am buying the shin eye in a sort of slightly bulk. Um, these actually cost less than the plastic broadswords. 
So there you are. That is my argument in favour of the Shinai single stick.